And welcome to episode four of Door Stuck. I am your host, Bach. Joining me on the show, as is always the case, Mr. Magic Helmet. Mitch, good morning. Well, good morning for you. It's still morning where you're at. Yeah, technically still morning here, uh, 11. So yeah, how you doing, Mark? We have a spicy show today, <sighs> sounds like. Yeah, so we were going to actually do some fun with uh, Mitch's green screen to put him into the territory of what we're going to be talking about. There's been a few things that have happened throughout the week of Counter-Strike. Uh, obviously, Valve recently updated Vertigo, made a bunch of changes, added the crosshair stuff that we've seen being very popular in Valorant, where you can see the crosshair of the people you're playing with, along with a few other changes. One of the biggest ones, nerfing the Krieg, finally changing the Krieg, although implementing a jumping deagle that's really bizarre... I uh, didn't really necessarily agree with that one. So th there's been some uh, interesting storylines throughout the week, but I think the one that's really standing out as the most spathy relates to WESG and not paying prize pools. Yeah, uh, yeah, just quick commentary. Awesome that they nerfed the Krieg. I think it was a long time coming. I mean, you could see it across the board from professional players, semi-pro players. Um, it needed to happen, and eventually it did. I'm wondering if that's pressure from kind of the popularity that Valorant has seen since they launched the game. It's really putting pressure on Valve to satisfy current CS players to keep them from going to another game or just generally up their game to, you know, get those new players who would normally be getting into Counter-Strike from going to Valorant. Uh, either way, uh, it's good that they got rid of that. And, you know, I, I, I can just imagine them in the back of like their dev room thinking of up ideas on how we can make changes. And they're like, wait, I got it. We're going to make a jumping deagle, guys. And then they actually yeah, right? like ship it. So, uh, I mean, it, it was a quality meme. Like, obviously, you know, it's already been patched, uh, at least changed in some capacity. So clearly uh, wasn't one of their best ideas. Uh, I thought it was funny that it was actually a possibility, but uh yeah just going on to the wendigo story this is uh pretty interesting and we've seen a lot out of wesg when it comes to uh late payments no payments and a lot of different issues while the events are going on or when people are trying to get the event so uh yeah uh, i'm reading the hltv article right here they did a really good write-up we have a lot of detail on that and that's kind of what we're going to be running through today yeah, you know, in general, WESG is no strangers to controversy. Um, obviously, I think the most uh, infamous controversy was the hotel situations for the one year where teams were, like, staying in a hotel whose hallways were being supported by, like, 4x4 four four bricks. I think the the classic video was from Little Man. Uh, Little Man had gone into his room and turned on the sink and, like, roaches came out. Oh, God, I didn't hear that. But Yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was bad. Uh, the one year, they really had some problems. But it wasn't everyone. Not everyone was affected. There was some issue where, like, the hotel they were supposed to use was at capacity, so they started putting players elsewhere as a last-minute solution. But regardless, we've heard problems about WESG in the past, and we've heard problems about WESG when it relates to this specific issue, not paying prize pool. Uh, a, a prize pool. I was worried about that when the event initially got announced. Years ago, when the first WSG first came out, I'm like, who are these people? Can we trust them? And I think the answer at the time was maybe. And then the first event happened and people were like, okay, yeah, we can trust them. But then the event ends and prize pool isn't being paid. I've heard complaints from talent as well about late payment. And this has happened multiple times now. So you start to ask yourself, is it the teams? Because it doesn't seem like that should be the recurring problem. Yeah, and I think the biggest issue is that it's a recurring problem. You know, there's organizations that enter into the scene. You want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, WESG has been around for a while now, but just generally, you know, if there's an organization looking to get in CSGO, you want to give them the opportunity to host that event. And, you know, in some, in a lot of these cases, the, the events themselves are great. You know, it seems like a lot, there's a lot of good gameplay, but there's just so many things that surround it, so, so many different recurring problems and make me think if I'm on, uh, you know, Astralis, G2, Liquid, any of these big team names, like, is this even worth it? But then you see the price tag associated with it. And, you know, if I'm um, kind of maybe a middle of the road team, semi-pro, I have an opportunity to go to uh, one of these events, you know, that's the biggest money they're ever going to play for, likely. And, you know, if you're, a t you're, if you're an organization owner and you have an opportunity to get the prestige of winning such a, a large prize pool and then you're able to distribute those funds to players and make them happy and, uh, you know, that's one you want to jump at. And some, in some situations, you know, it's worth the risk to them, even though they know there's, uh, there's uh, history of them not making these payments. 
some of them, you know, it's, it's worth the risk to it. So, um, yeah, it's a tough situation, but just I, I am not a fan of WESG uh, at all. Just so many issues involved with it that if I'm a player, I'm just probably going to say no, even with the price tag associated with it. Now, the specific issue this time around relates to Windigo and how Windigo effectively saw their organization get crushed because of this problem. Yeah. So, I mean, looking at the article itself, if you look right at the top, Bulgarian team won $500,000, $500,000, half a million bucks, and they have not seen it. And now, they were a middle of the road team at the time. Yeah, they were, they were not like a top 10. They were not even a top 20. Uh, they were definitely a team that was on the rise. Now, they've seen, obviously, they saw changes after that event. So uh, they win that event, and then people go, okay, well, who are some of these guys from this Bulgarian roster, and maybe can we take them away and put them on our team? So it was March 27th of 2019 that they won that event. Um, and then all sorts of weird stuff started happening. Uh, Victor and Blocker got benched. In July, Haji and Kalix came on. Haji, the French player, and Kalix, of course, from Turkey, who was playing with the Space Soldiers guys. They release Victor. They bench ships, which was actually a bit surprising. Mirbit comes in. Ships transfers to crazy. Like, all of this weird stuff. And then, effectively, it's just like they were trying to find something to just crack into that upper echelon. And you wonder, you know, would Prize Pool have helped them find success? Probably not. You know, they probably wouldn't have done any better than they did with that extra prize pool, but the team could have created more support systems. Now, the bigger issue for me is if you go back a year prior to that WESG. So we're looking at 2018. Seized went on Twitter and said, has anyone else been paid by WESG yet? Because apparently everybody had problems with it. Yeah, this was a recurring issue for the guys who went to that event. So this is not like a one-off thing. We'll go ahead and pull up that tweet here in just a second because I feel like this is something that, you know, is a is a consistent problem. And you kind of got to ask yourself, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Now, now, just to preface it a little bit, you know, there's a lot of international banking laws, specific laws in China. There's a lot of laws in the, the areas where there's money is going to be going. So it's confusing. You know, I get it. You know, things can happen here. You know, you might get bad information sent um, from the team to WSG and whoever is going to be distributing the funds. But the fact that it just continually happens, uh, you know, tells me either someone doesn't know what they're doing or they're just not interested in paying or trying to drag it along as long as possible to have those funds for something else. I don't know what that information is, but it's clearly something is going wrong uh, on WESG's end where they're either not uh, telling the play or telling the teams what information they should be supplying to their accountants or whoever is going to be paying it on their end um, and just poor communication involved in all of it. So, you know, something needs to change for WESG if their events are going to continue and they're going to be able to get teams to actually buy into it and go to these events. You know, sure, they're going to be able to pull, you know, let's say MDL level teams, uh, maybe some below that or that are trying to go to uh, a larger event that they wouldn't normally be able to go to. But, you know, there's going to be pro teams that are just flat out saying no. If I remember correctly, I think NIP was a team that was slated to go to the event, and there was another big-name team. I think it was like Ents or something like that. And I don't know if it was specifically because they knew the history of WESG or just because something came up in their schedule that they weren't able to make it, but they dropped out of that event. And I imagine part of the reason they did that was because of the history of WESG non-payment, player conditions, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's an organization you definitely want to think twice about working with. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm looking at it again, and here's that article as well from 2018 talking about how WESG came out and made a statement regarding the prize pool that was as of yet unpaid. This is as has been a consistent problem, and for an organizer who now has run multiple events, you'd expect them to have this process a little bit more ironed out, but clearly that is not the case. So you just start looking at, you know, you, you look at the way these teams are com- complaining, and you're like, okay, well... I think this all makes perfect sense. How long does it take you to get this stuff under control? I personally have had no interaction with WSG. I've never worked with them, but I haven't always heard good things from other talent who have or talent who was approached by them. I know that one of the longstanding issues that they have with these events is their nationality rules. 
So if you, WESG is effectively the Olympics uh, of gaming, uh, you know, you're required to play with a full roster of people from that country, which can be a little bit difficult because currently in Counter-Strike, there are a lot of mixed nationality rosters. And I mean, even just looking at like the CIS region, a lot of those countries play together constantly. Uh, yeah. you, you have a lot of Russian players playing with Ukrainian players who are playing with, you know, Serbian players who are playing with anyone from like basically Eastern Europe over to Russia. There is a lot of uh, overlap in a lot of those countries. So finding co some teams from there that can definitely dominate is difficult. But that makes this, you know, all that more frustrating because this is a huge opportunity for a team like Windigo or a team like Space Soldiers, for instance, who is another team that had, you know, a full roster of people from one specific country who are trying to build up their country's region in Counter-Strike. So they see these tournaments as a huge opportunity because they know all these mixed nationality European rosters or even the, the U.S. rosters are going to have a hard time competing at the event because they have to form a roster sometimes weeks before the event actually takes place. So it is a little disappointing because I would have loved to see Windigo maybe push that project a little while longer, especially because we've seen success coming out from other people in the Bulgarian scene. You look at some of the Bulgarian players who have risen up. You've got guys like Cirque and you've got guys like Poison yeah. that are both <laughs> really good players, and you wonder, what if? Yeah, I mean, that 500K could have really continued to support uh, the grassroots teams and players in that area and now that they don't have that money you know that could have been money that could have helped them out and you know they could have maybe kept Cirque in the area they could have kept poison in the area um but yeah just one thing to go back to is that you know because all these teams uh, are going to be coming from the same country typically they you know there's going to be some sort of mix as you mentioned so whenever they form these teams you know there might be you know two players from canada two from north america but they're not you know dedicated full teams that have you know, backing from an organization. So when these guys are putting together these teams, you know, they're not going to have team managers. They're normally used to, they're not going to have a travel agent. You know, I assume liquid has somebody that handles all the travel for the events. So unless they bring somebody in extra, who's going to eventually going to need to fly out as well, that's another added cost. You know, it's up to the, the players themselves making this things happen or these things happen. And some of these guys, you know, they're 18, 19, you know, they're certainly capable of doing it, but they might not know the ins and outs of a lot of, uh, the things that they're going to have to go through number one visas, you know, the flights, you know, what's the best flight plan. And there's just so much that goes into these events that a lot of the organization background, uh, or is helped out by the background of the organization, um, that these players might not have access to unless they bring them in themselves to handle it for them. So it's, it just makes it that much more difficult. Now, obviously there is an external factor that has to be mentioned. WESG is based out of China. And the coronavirus lockdown in China was severe. So yeah. communication lines with WESG very likely deteriorated because of that. Now, is that to say that's the only reason why things went south with them? Maybe. Maybe that's the only reason. Maybe that's why things became very difficult. But, you know, the guys from Windigo are claiming that like, they're still owed that money. And regardless of what happened with that team, those players still won that money. So, like, even if the, the org gets a cut, even if it's only 50K per player, that's still a lot of money. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know necessarily the conversion rate of currency in Bulgaria, but I'd imagine that the $50,000 in Bulgaria would go somewhat far. I mean, it would go far in the United States. And, like, that's a year's salary for some people. Yeah, to put into context the size of this prize pool, I did the math. Yes, I did, Mark. Uh, you can buy 20,000 five-pound bags of Mike and Ike's with $500,000. You're talking about filling up Olympic swimming pool with Mike and Ike's. And that's how much money this is. It's insane. And the fact that, you know, they, these guys might have like earmarked this money towards rent, towards other bills that they might have, or to be investing in something that can help them in the future. And the fact that they, they aren't getting paid here, it can cause a lot of problems. Apparently Bulgaria is also one of the cheapest places to live in the world. I'm just trying to look it up right now. The minimum wage was uh i'm just looking at an article this could be very old so you know forgive me but uh it was originally 170 euros now it's 260 per month uh but the actual wage has climbed above 500 euros a month a decent two-bedroom apartment near the city center would cost about 300 euros um so let's go ahead and do 50,000 usd to euro and you get an idea, that's 45,000 euros. So that would last you a very long time. 
yeah. given the cost of living currently in Bulgaria. And then on top of that, it's not just WESG. They claim also to be owed money by the company who was running Mochi XL Esports, which is E2 Tech. So they claim that E2 Tech owes them, I think it was like $125,000 or something like that. They, they were owed a significant sum of money as well from the people behind Mochi Esports. So, I mean, that's a lot of money, man, to not have in your pocket. Now, usually when we're talking about people not paying as, as casters, we're talking about talent. Uh, usually the teams are paid because they understand that teams have significant pull, and if teams and players don't get paid, you're going to find out pretty quick, and it is going to really sour the public opinion of your organization. Yeah, that's their product, you know? Yeah, but talent, we're kind of under their thumb. Uh, if you don't pay us and we go public, you'll never hire us again. That's usually the fear for most lower-level talent. That's not yeah. the fear if you're a big name because you don't have anything to worry about. Your, your brand is so powerful that they're going to have to hire you or everyone's going to go, well, why the hell isn't this guy here? But like, I know for a fact that there are certain tournament organizers who have taken nearly a year or more to pay talent. Yeah. That like I mean, is insane. Star Ladder comes to mind. That's one of, one of the first ones I've seen. Uh, I'm trying to remember who it was. Somebody sent out a tweet that they hadn't been paid for a significant amount of time. And they'd put in a lot of work with a specific company. It wasn't just a one-time thing. It was multiple uh, events that they had worked. And they just you know trusted that, hey, we're eventually going to be getting this money. Um, who was that? Was that Banks, if I remember right? Because I know he did a lot Banks of Banks actually put out a... a a piece um, about tournament organizers who don't pay. Uh, he yeah. was interviewed. I, I haven't had a chance to to go through it because I, I wanted to. And it was about talent too because it was not just about the TOs. It was also about talent who undercuts and who does like some slimy maneuvers behind the scenes to try to get additional gigs, which I actually DM'd him. I was like, I hope I'm not on this list. If I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I was like, please don't put me in this list. And, and no, like... I was not, thank God. But there are people I know that have gone in with as talent and have said to a TO, I know that you pay these guys this much. I'll do it for this much to try to get gigs. And it's worked with some of them. And ultimately, it damages the entire industry because now that tournament organizer doesn't want to pay any more than that amount of money. Yeah, and then it's just a race to the bottom because, you know, these people need gigs. So it's a terrible business practice. I mean, it might be good for you, but for the industry itself, it's just dumb. So people that do that are just jerks, for lack of a better word. Um, but yeah, Star Ladder was one of them. And there's, you know, there's a bunch of other organizations that have had issues paying talent. And, you know, I, I mentioned it before. I get it. There's, there's going to be some situations where things come up. I understand it. I know, and I've been a part of tournaments where, you know, payouts didn't go in the exact time to manner as it was quoted in, uh, you know, the event description. And this, this was a while ago, but you know, things come up, but nonetheless, you need to be showing an effort in making those payments. And, you know, clearly W W E S G is really dragging their feet. It's been a year, figure it out or fire the person that can't figure it out and find yeah. somebody. New. Like, it's I not mean, that difficult. come on. We, we, uh, we've done a lot of work with ESEA over the years. I used to work for them full time and this is not me just being a shill, but the truth is they were always fantastic with payouts. Um, I never had an issue with ESEA's payout procedures. Yeah. It always was rapid. If they said they were going to pay me on a certain day and it wasn't paid, I could find out why. And usually it's like, Oh, you know, you sent the invoice in late or you didn't invoice or, you know, there was some reason that I wasn't thinking of. And then payment was processed that day because I asked about it. So I would fix the problem, get it processed, and that was fixed. Uh, I've had other organizations, though, that definitely don't. You know, I, I am going to go ahead and call out Starletter. I did work for Starletter online. It took them nine months to pay me. It was like it was like $200. It was not a lot of money. But it was enough that, like, I wanted that money. If it was, like, one map, I'd be like, all right, whatever, like, take my losses. And there's there's been events, I've never called them out, that I've never been paid for. Um, there's been tournaments that I just le legitimately did not get money for, or the rate that I quoted them and we agreed upon was not what I got. Uh, I actually got less than what I was, what I had originally quoted them on. And it's made me leery of smaller tournament organizers when they come knocking, asking me for quotes, because I know if I give them that quote and I don't know who they are, there's a chance that they could come back and either not pay me or pay me far less because the event didn't go as successful as they thought because they Googled esports and saw that it was working and thought, I can do that too. It's just <laughs> video games. That's ultimately like what, what I have a gripe with. And this is my soapbox moment, I guess you could say. I get really frustrated because 
all of these companies that come into esports think, oh, it's just video games. How hard can it be? And then they I screw it all up. Papers, you know? Yeah, like they they got they got an esports consultant on Twitter who got in their ear and told them how it's a industry that's blowing up and it's making billions of dollars because they saw some article in the Washington Post. But they don't understand that making billions of dollars means spending billions of dollars and the margins are razor thin. That number you're seeing is not profit, it's revenue. So learn the difference between the two before you just decide to throw a huge event and bring all these people in and then royally screw up the whole situation. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, rant. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you've been uh, holding that one in for a while there, Mark. Dude, that's been a frustrating thing for me for a long time. And I will publicly call people like that out. That's happened yeah, more than right. once. Uh, there's been multiple instances of events that tried to like ride that esports wave. I think the most obvious one was Gamers Paradise, which was yeah. that Counter Strike event uh, in, I think it was in Serbia. And like it just went horribly wrong because they had no idea what they were doing. They were just like, we have some money, let's throw an event. Maybe the sponsors will come if we do this. The sponsors didn't come. They didn't have enough money. PCs never arrived. To prize pool wasn't paid out. Uh, visas and passports were held on like almost ransom at the hotel because the rooms weren't paid for. And the final was played out, but like it was it was an absolute travesty and a joke of an event. Just a big dumpster fire. That's what yeah. that sounds like. Uh. Terrible. But as much as I'd love to continue to just rail on crappy tournament organizers and everything, that's all we really wanted to talk about on the show. Yeah, we'll we'll do more of this. We'll just we'll have a part two where I just it's just a, a camera on my face, real close up, and I'll just be yelling at the camera about why I think these tournament organizers suck. Um, Mitch, do you have anything you want to add before we close things out? No, another fun week. Uh, this one was pretty spicy. We got we could get into it. So yeah, enjoyed it. I uh, hope everybody has a great weekend and episode five next Friday. Yeah, hopefully you guys are staying safe during this whole process as well. I know it's been frustrating for some. Uh, I have kids, and they desperately want to go out and see their friends, but it's a very difficult time for them to, for that to under for them to understand that. So hopefully you guys are being safe. And if you are, that means you're sitting at your computer right now watching us, and you'll be here next week as well. So make sure you follow the channel here on Twitch. We'll also be uploading this to YouTube, so make sure you head on over to that. And if you don't follow Nerd Street Gamers on Twitter, make sure that you do. You should also follow me and Mitch. We would appreciate it, guys, and we'll see you next time.